So it has been about one year since the two-week lockdown started in the UK. And uh, as with all these things that are making a resurgence again, <laughs> COVID-19, the vaccine, emails, fake emails that is, malicious actors taking advantage of a very topical item. Although these articles are dated back in December and January, you think, well, is it just taking me a long time to talk about it? Uh, no, it's actually just taking me a long time to see these things for real at the place I work. Although we do seem to be getting a lot of spam, yes, rapid antigen COVID-19 testing kits for cheaper and less effective than anything else you can possibly get. Yeah, 4 95 per test, box of 20 tests, yeah, whatever. Okay, I'm sure that's very reliable, isn't it? But no, here's the actual phishing emails. So email from denverkit.com to Alex. Reminder, your SARS-2 covariant test results are ready to be take off. Ready to be take off? Take off where? Are they flying away somewhere? Ooh, be careful now. Cove2 update some other codes. Your COVID-19 results ready to be take off. <laughs> Document your test results. And yeah, you can't see the link there. Oh no, you sort of can. It's, it's a OneDrive.ms link. And a PIN number. Because of course you need a PIN number to look at a document. The PIN number is actually a password and it's done to password protect the document to prevent automated antivirus scanning. My office will call you to make an appointment so we can address this. If you have questions before your appointment please call my nurse at phone support and that's funny because the hover over link has telephone 1646 and the URL has telephone 178. <laughs> Thank you and talk to you soon. Sincerely, your current, retired and future doctors and nurses. <laughs> what on earth? This is terrible for a phishing email. Anyway, no matter how much I complain about these emails being pretty bad, uh, we can still see from a recent phishing test that uh, a lot of people in the company are clicking on them and giving away credentials. I mean, our one that was pretty bad on the spelling got about 10% of the uh, company giving away their credentials. So we have a password protected email and we're going to need the password to that because, yeah, make it really easy, don't you? Anyway, essentially, this is it. And we get COVID-19 test result doctor note dot VBS <laughs> visual basic script. What would you like me to open your visual basic script in? Well, here it is here and I can open it in Linux because I don't have anything that's going to run it. And I don't know what we're meant to be expecting here because we have a load of comments here saying Mozilla Public License version 2. <laughs> so far my uh, COVID-19 test results are off to a bitter disappointment here because we've gone on a massive distraction and are now talking about a browser. Anyway, after a lot of these comments, comments starting with that single quote in Visual Basic, from what I do remember, it's been many years since I've done anything with Basic something a little bit more interesting uh, obviously that's uh, very encoded there not exactly making much sense but there's a little bit more code further down uh, yeah I'm not going to read that I'm not going to interpret it but what I'm going to do instead is just chuck it in a virtual machine and see what the result is of running this so we're gonna have a Windows 10 machine and we're gonna pop out of America we'll give it a 10 minute runtime and I think I also want to pretend that I'm using the machine, so we're going to do a bit of random cursor movement as well. Well, here we go, and it doesn't look very interesting, does it? There's, I mean, you wouldn't even know anything had happened. And normally I hate interacting with these sandboxes because every interaction you do can be considered as something the malware did. Essentially, we're trying to spot that something's happened so Microsoft Windows based I'm gonna guess that's the script running there funny enough malware doesn't say woohoo look your machines infected well normally it doesn't not until it's too late anyway in the case of a uh, sort of crypto locker type malware looks like there's a bit of a spike on the CPU a couple of times there huh, that's intriguing why is uh, command prompt open <laughs> what is going on here I did not open you I noticed that PowerShell is using a lot of CPU resource. Oh, what's this? Oh, I didn't get to read that in time. I'll have to look at it on the playback. And here's the results from the interactive sandbox. So it has scored 100 out of 100. 
100% malicious, that is. And it scored 100 for a single point of communication with a URL ending in gates.php. Detected, and it went to the website transfermychoice.com. So how popular is that domain? Well, it has received a massive four queries. Four. Wow, that is spectacular. So either that's very targeted or it uses a number of different domains to be able to obfuscate that. Anyway, we also have PowerShell Potential Remote Code Execution. You know, all these lovely things. We have PowerShell scripts that I didn't even run. They obviously came out of that malware. This is why I don't like interacting with the sandbox because it's detected me running Task Manager and it's scored it as 81. So yeah, it does distort these things a little bit if you interact with them. Which is a shame because you kind of want to know what is going on. But yeah, sometimes you just have to resist that and leave it running and review the results afterwards. So there's all sorts of different things done with PowerShell here. Lots of different scripts run. And we have VB script contains randomly generated variables. <laughs> really? Never would have guessed that from uh, glancing through the code. A batch script launches PowerShell. That was that uh, glance of command prompt running. So yeah, obviously went command prompt into PowerShell and started doing something very long-winded in PowerShell. One of those items was downloading a file from the WHO's website, downloading a legitimate PDF. I was thinking, is there actually anything in that PDF? Well, although I haven't actually gone and uh, completely dissected it, I think what they're doing there is actually just going on the internet to check connections. So go to a legitimate website that won't have been blocked. In this case, the WHO. So yeah, just checking that connection works and then being able to do their further stages of the malware run. Got some various modifications in the registry. Oh, we got uh, auto run registry key values. I'm not sure if that was the original item being run there, but I would think it would understand its original item. So, internat.exe got put in as. Wait, does that actually exist? Internat.exe, or is that someone having a laugh there? This file has been identified as a program that is undesirable to have running on your computer. Yeah, I'm going to guess that's malware there. So we've got um, an executable running at startup. So this machine is infected and is going to remain infected. So yeah, that was the result of that malware. Now there is one item missing there. A very key item missing. In that Nava Antivirus has recognised that as malicious. And that would be recognised in the behavioural indicators if one or more antiviruses recognise the file as being malicious. So... There you go, you can have the best antivirus on your system and it will not get this. Anyway, that was a look at some COVID-19 malware. I'm sure these things are going to continue, but uh, I'm not necessarily sure that they're going on the rate of, uh, that the press are suggesting. But yeah, press always like to big things up, don't they? Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.